So it's been a couple of years since Sword and Shield has finished. We've obviously had all of the sets you can see on screen. And I was interested to see where I would rank them right now. We've got top, obviously a top tier set, solid, average, and low. Now, there is definitely up and downs in all the kind of whole sets whenever you look at Sword and Shield, Black and White, X and Y, even in Scarlet and Violet. You've got to have some bangers and you've got to have some lows. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. Now, the question is, leave your comments down below. What would you put them into retrospectively? Let me know down below as well, because we start off, we'll have a look at a few of the sets as well, just to see some of the bangers, because... It's very hard now, looking back, going from like a Crown Zenith to a base set Sword and Shield. Because realistically, we've started to get more and more special arts as the time has gone on. So we've had in Crown Zenith a whole trainer gallery. Same as Lost Origin, same as also Astral Radiance, and also with Silver Tempest. There was just so many. But the one thing that I'm interested in when it comes to these sorts of sets is the card designs. Now, we're not going to go through every single common. We might pick out a couple of fan favorites. Love the Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. There is obviously certain cards, everybody's favorites. Personally, I love any of the 151, especially of the arts up there. But then you look at the likes of Lucario, any of the legendaries, and realistically, everybody loves these end sets. They love the special arts. Not quite in that top category, in my opinion. I think base set was definitely... A good starting point, and, and obviously when it comes to sets, you don't want to completely go all out for everything straight off the bat. So I think if I was to have to go with a Sword and Shield base, I would probably go as average as you like. Because we're not necessarily going for an absolute killer here. There is obviously some sets that I probably could go low straight away. Pokemon Go, personally, wasn't great. I, I think it was a very on the spot sort of set it definitely had legs but realistically trying to cross over a game and also the tcg and try and make it like the game is the cards it, it just really didn't work some nice things in there i think the set itself was very nice for pokemon go players especially if you wanted that actual set it's kind of like the 151 of scarlet and violet you're hitting this subset of people because not every pokemon go player will also collect cards and vice versa not everybody collector is going to play pokemon go so it was kind of that crossing past with it and i thought it was decent enough but in terms of an actual set it wasn't great champion's path another one personally for me that just really didn't hit on the nose it's okay some of the arts are, are, are okay you've obviously got venusaur there um as a nice v you've got this huge cake um, i mean there is some nice designs I like lucario not my favorite design for him but there's some bits but realistically everybody's after the charizard v and as nice as the card is it's it's decent it's again not even in the top 10 charizard list at this point in time so realistically the set itself was very bog standard and that's not necessarily just for the fact that the set is quite small i think celebrations is absolutely solid it's it's a very wonderful set that is not necessarily massively sought after because naturally the set is tiny but i like the fact that you can get it quite affordably um, there is a lot of nice designs there is a lot of pretty much everything to hollow the packs itself now very expensive this is not necessarily an investment price or you must go and buy celebrations because the price is absolutely crazy but when we look at the general set so before you go to the classic obviously you've got a lot of the legendaries a nice array of pikachus love it surfing flying um v max and v you've then got a cheeky mew you've got cosmo and and cosmog all there as well and then you go on to the next bit you've obviously got the gold blue mew very nice but then you have the the base set you have professor oak as the imposter dark garados it brings a lot of the old sets which was my fan favorite from base set obviously imposter professor oak the darks love the rocket set even the pikachu promo love it and then you go into a bit of rockets the shinings i think after that so when it comes to kind of like these cards the team magmas i'd kind of finished stop collecting but i I like where it went. Same with, obviously, the looks Ray with um, his trainer next to him. Same with Garchomp. I like that extra. And then we go into completely out of my zone, really, like Mega Rayquaza EX. I didn't have any of these cards. I completely finished collecting by this point. So now bringing me back into it a little bit, I'd say it's solid. I would say definitely one of my more favored sets that is 
very small, still a little bit pricey, don't get me wrong, it's not like it's like £100 for everything, it's, it's still got some merit to it, but most definitely, I like the set itself for what it, what it portrays as a set. One of my favourites, and I think everybody's going to be the same, I, I don't know if it's purely because I've packed the Moonbryon before, but Evolutions for me is just absolute top tier. I don't think there's any questions there. The set itself, if you are a big Evolution fan, it's brilliant. You obviously have got the normal Vs, the Vmaxes, if you're not necessarily going after the crazy amount. You've obviously got Flareon. You've got yourself a lovely Vaporeon. We keep going down. One of my favorites in Jolteon. Love the Raichu card as well. Um, if we go keeping down, Espeon. And then also a big fan favorite in Umbreon. One of my favorites in, in Evolution, uh, EV Evolution, 100%. Even then showing off a few of the Gal uh, Galarian birds as well. We've also got a cheeky Ray in there. And then you go down to the absolute hit list. Like there is the, this set itself with how much it genuinely costs is nuts like i've never seen too much of a set of a modern set be so expensive but even then i love the arts of them you've got obviously the the special um alt arts that are just incredible Golrook there you've obviously got a metacham umbreon in many forms the lovely rayquaza v there is just a certain lovely design of it you've got the v max rayquaza as well still coming up with a big price but moonbreon sylveon glaceon leafy there's just so many it's a shame that we didn't have the jolteon vaporeon and also flareon here because having a whole set of ev Evolu ev evolutions in there as well I mean, that set would have just personally gone off. And it's it, we've, there is no question for me, that has got to be one of the top sets in the absolute Sword and Shield era. Couple of the others where I'm like, uh, that they're, they're okay, but it's not necessarily my cup of tea personally, would be the likes of, unfortunately, Rebel Clash. I'd probably go Vivid Voltage in there. The Battle Styles, to be honest, even though there is some cards where I'm like, okay, I could, I could see where they're going with that, but realistically, when you come to them, they're very bog standard. Like, literally, we look at Rebel Clash, you've got a few decent cards in there, but nothing that really takes my fancy. Um, you, you obviously have a lot of the Vs and Vmaxes, that's what it really comes to it. Dragapult, absolutely love him on a card. I think there's going to be that standout card design. Let me know if you've got one for him that really will make him pop. But when it comes to the end here... It's a lot of the rainbows more so than anything, and I'm just not necessarily a fan of the rainbow. I think the rainbows are nice, but they're not necessarily my go-to. I think all tarts have definitely become a fan favorite of mine, but when it comes to this set, I wouldn't say necessarily there's anything where I'm like going, that is what I need, give it to me now. But if we look at kind of the rest of them, we'll kind of go off here so I can back out from here. You obviously look at the likes of, did I put Darkness Ablaze in here? I think even Darkness Ablaze, to be honest. I know you've obviously got the VMAX Charizard. I think that could make it just slightly average. But even so, when, when we look through the rest of it, there isn't really any substance to it. I, I like a set when it's got multiple hits. You look at... Not hits is in is in price, but hits where you're like, okay, that is a beautiful card. And when we look through it, like I like a scissor, don't get me wrong, it's not 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 terrible. Um Salamance, not a bad one. But then even when you go into the kind of the extra, the special hidden ones, there's nothing really here where I'm like, okay, that design looks impeccable. I'd probably even argue that even Darkness Ablaze should really be kind of at the bottom here. And yes, it does have the Charizard, which I think automatically gives it some merit. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a crazy one behind me. But one that does. Now, if we go right to the end, now this is obviously where we really started to see some incredible cards. Obviously, Crown Zenith, the final set. They went all out. You love a bit of the Charizard. Obviously, Entei, you got Radiant Charizard. The whole set itself is just full of absolute bangers. Zorora, big fan of him in a card. He looks stunning. You've obviously got the Ray Ray. Um, you've got uh, Eternus. Reggie Gigas with some nice cards as well, but the main hitters here, and you also got this Pikachu card, brilliant. But the main hitters in this is going to be in the Galarian Gallery. This is just a brilliant idea to have a whole set of these. Personally, I'm, I'm about 
10, 15% into it. Absolutely love it. Just having card after card with a very nice design, like Deoxys. Like, look, look at the card itself. Like, it's a very affordable card, and I, and I like that in a set as well. But it's nice. It, it just looks pleasing. Even when you go for the, 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 the literally, like, the, the cheapest cards, the Absol, the Solrock. Then you look at Keldeo, Hisuian Voltorb. It's nice and peaceful. And even then, like Miltank as well. Miltank's a big fan favorite, obviously. But then you get into the legendary special arts. You've got the Leafeon V-Star, the Entei, Suicune. Obviously, Zorora, like I said, some incredible ones. Raikou, incredible. Glaceon. And then even if you go a bit further down, obviously, we're seeing another Deoxys. Zorora's nice. You've got the Mewtwo V-Star. It's just hit after hit after hit, and then you get to the most expensive with the gold cards. Just looking at some of these designs, Arceus obviously looking incredible. You've got, again, another stunning Giratina card. So for me, I would definitely say for, for a Crown Zenith, they hit the mark on that one. I'd probably say the only other set, and it's a personal fan favorite of mine, that would really hit that top category would have to be Shining Fates. And I don't even know if that's necessarily because of any of the designs. I just love this idea. I'm a big fan of collecting. I like a set to complete. To complete. This would be one of the most pleasing sets. And it's the same for every single one from Scarlet and Violet. Um, we obviously had... Pow... No, it's not Pow Day. What is it now? It is... Powdayan Fates, and I knew it was something. Powdayan Fates, obviously you have got Shining uh, Shining Fates, and then you go one further back, and it's Hidden Fates. Was that this one? Hidden Fates, obviously the Shiny collection. I don't know, did they have one in X and Y? I think Hidden Fates was one of the first, I want to say. Let me know if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. All three of them. I absolutely love the design option. I like how it's done. Very small set on the top. Obviously, like 70-something cards, 72 cards. Obviously, getting a VMAX. I'd prefer that at the end, personally. I'd, I'd rather go with that. I suppose they've gone with all of the trainer arts there. But when you look at this, this is going to be an incredible collection of Shining cards. For me, this is definitely worth it on its own. Obviously, then you've got the Shining VMAX Charizard. Of course, you've got a few of these cards that are interesting. I want to say I have a Turnus. I don't know if I have the uh, VMAX. Sorry, I don't know if I have the V. But it's just a lovely design. I, I like this set personally. It's just my personal fan favorite. And then we've kind of got some nice substance cards. Obviously, you've got yourselves the Lost Origin, the Silver Tempest, Chilling Rain. Chilling Rain, surprisingly, not a bad set whatsoever. I think it's got some hitters in there. And I do think because it kind of came, when you look at the kind of um, the timeline of all of this, you kind of had yourself the, the, the base set. It was solid. Everybody loved it. Into the new set. Brilliant. Rebel Clash. Eh, people didn't really go with it. Darkness Ablaze. Champion's Path. Bit of Vivid Voltage. Then we got the hitter of Shining Fates, which went off. Battle Stars again went down a little bit. I feel like Chilling Rain just kind of came off a little bit of a negative set. And then we got Evolutions, which probably is not the one that wants to follow you. Because it just really narrows down that, okay, this is where we start collecting. Evolving Skies was just there. But when we look at the set itself, it does have some nice hitters at the end, more so than anything. A few nice designs. Obviously, the Galarian Birds, I'm a big fan of. But then we kind of go down a little bit. Zorora again, really kind of popping off. You've got the Galarian Birds, love the Moltres. Zapdos, more average than not. Um, again, with the Articuno, love that one as well. Even the, the likes of Tornadus, they started really hammering down on these very nice pictures. And obviously, they've given you the Blaziken VMAX, which as a card itself, I'm like, it looks... It will look better in picture, uh, in, in real life than it does in picture. In picture, I'm like, it's average. Like, I would much rather... Go with, like, the Zorora card that we just saw. Like, I would... Where is it gone? Uh, like, like this one. I like the where, where it, it displays a picture. Any other Pokemon in it as well. Weavile, uh, Kel Keldeo? I'm saying that wrong. No, it's not Keldeo. It's... Oh, it's the Camouflage Pokemon. 
let me know down below. I can't remember what he's called. I know what he's called, but I cannot remember at the same time. I'm more of a picture fan. I I, I like the, the, the arts of, of, of what Blaziken is, but I think that sort of thing is better in real life than it will be actually in picture. But I think for Chilling Rain, I'd go average. I, I don't think I'm going to be too harsh on that. Obviously, Fusion Strike is there as well. Another one that I do think is, is kind of up there. It's not necessarily my favorite set in the world. But it's decent enough, I'd say. So if we kind of go into that one as well. This one came out, obviously, after Evolving Skies and also Celebration. So it's a very, very hard set to follow. I must admit, it'd be like the set that followed 151. They either have to whoop it or they just take the hit and think, okay, everybody's gone for this set. This one might just be a little bit of a Fallout set. And again, we've got some nice designs going on. Obviously, all of the commons, and, and they're definitely not to be missed, but... If we want to go through over 2,000 common cards and, and holo cards, we're going to be here for a long time. And I guarantee yeah, you don't care that much. So then, when we look at it, Celebi, Mew, always nice, good mythicals. In terms of the set itself, obviously you've got the Espeon and the Gengar. Um, it's not necessarily my favorite Gengar card. I, I like it, and I think obviously the price is up there, so it's going to be more drawn to, but... It's not necessarily my number one. I'm much more of a fan of, of kind of Gengar out of his VMAX form or his Gigantamax form. So I think for me, I wouldn't necessarily go solid. I'd say a solid average, in my opinion. Which leads us, to be honest, to the kind of middle to end sets now. When we look at it, you've obviously got the lovely, Gal um, not Galarian, you've got the Trainer Galleries. We've obviously lost Origin and Silver Tempest. Some lovely designs, which... Is hard to beat, and I think it's why these sets will always overtake the Rebel Clashes and Darkness of Blazes, because they don't have this. There is so many, there's 30 different cards of special art nature that they just will not be able to kind of compete with. The Blaziken, absolutely stunning in the VMAX. You obviously then have a nice Corviknight, one of the better ones that you'll find, then a lovely Rayquaza. Even Blissey, to be honest, is a solid, solid design. When we look at the likes of Lost Origin, again, they have the same. You've got Charizard with... I can't remember his name. Is it going to tell me here? Probably not. No, it's, it's not. Is it red? No, it's not red. I don't know who it is. Let me know down below. I don't really watch the anime to the point of knowing everybody. You have Chunkachu. You then have a few others in, in obviously the black and gold cards with Chunkachu and Mew. And then some nice arts with Pikachu. A lovely Gengar. That's more my Gengar personally. Gengar is obviously one of my favorites if you didn't know. And then obviously Snorlax as well. So I think for them two personally, they're always going to be up there. They have to be in that solid. Wouldn't say top. I'd say they're definitely up there in a... In a a good regards, but I wouldn't go crazy over them. And then another one is going to be the Astral Radiance. They also had a lovely trainer gallery here as well. Um, again, with them, kind of the Galarian birds are there. We've obviously got Zacian and Zamazenta. And then really their kind of other one would be um, Calyrex. I think in terms of the actual set, these, these were kind of like prime my collecting comeback days. I didn't necessarily get crazy amounts of them. I think my first booster box back was Silver Tempest, I want to say. So that was when I was really starting to get back in it. But even so, you've still got these cards in here. Obviously, one of the fan favorites is going to be the Machamp carrying plates. And then you've got a few others with obviously Palkia. You've got Dialga origin form as well. So there is more substance to the sets also. And then that leads us really to Brilliant Stars, another one that is decent enough. I think that's got a, a good amount. You've obviously got your Entes, your Charizards. Um, realistically, you've got Raikou. We don't have a Suicune, which is very, very odd that they've got both of them. They always do that. I think they should always come in sets, so I don't know why they didn't bother there. Obviously, at the end of the sets, you've got a few nice ones. Some decent designs as well. You've obviously got the Charizard V. You've got Honchkrow. I love the Arceus card. I think Arceus is just always in an altar, pictured so well, it's brilliant. And then you've also got the Gold Birds as well, which is, again, another solid set. So I think for me, them two would possibly go in them sets. So let me know down below what you think. Is that right or do you have a different opinion? Have you got a favorite set in Sword and Shield? Leave it in the comment section below and I'll catch you all for the next one. Peace.